Welcome, fish fans, to my backyard. And this is our lovely little resident research goldfish population, here to illustrate what happens to a fish pond in the rain that we've been having so much recently. So, obviously, if you have a pond, this one's a little full right now, you sometimes can't control what the environment does to that. And with ponds in particular, you can get a lot of rain which in this area of California, probably a pretty good thing because we've been in some droughts recently. But the biggest issue with rain going into ponds is that it can affect your pH. So how does this happen? Well, the pH of our water here in California, usually fairly high, around eight, eight and a half. That's just normal for us here. Uh, perfectly fine for most of your outdoor fish, koi, and goldfish. However, the pH of the rain falling from the sky is usually going to be a little bit lower. It can be a lot lower. It can be about six. Um, I've actually collected a little bit here that we're going to be running a test for in a second. So if you have a lot of rain with a very low pH and a very low KH, so that's your carbonate alkalinity, uh, can cause the pH of your pond, depending on how much water is pretty much recycled out, to go down down very, very quickly and cause a pH crash. So we're going to test our water here. Oh, we got a cat trying to join us. Um, and like I said, this is collected from a little piece of Tupperware that I had out on the table here during the rain. So I use a Hawk Fish Farmers test kit. We're just looking at a pH for the rain. I'm going to try to line this up the best I can. It's a little hard to see sometimes. I'm going to come back behind the camera. So we line this up, and then this will tell us our pH. Oop, going the wrong way. I'm trying to do the backwards. So again, this is our rainwater. Eh, sometimes it's a little hard to dial it. I'd say it's probably right between 5.5 and, and 6 which is what we predicted. A yeah, little green, a little yellow. I'd say it's probably right in the middle. So now we're gonna take a pond sample. So again, there's a little bit of rainwater that's coming to this. Not a ton, because we have a, an overhang here above us. Oh, it's the same level. So this, the pond itself is actually at a pH of, whoop, going the other way now. Sorry, it's trying to do two things at once in my brain. Um, again, this is going to look about eight, eight and a half. So usually 8.2 is normal for our little outdoor pond. So as you can see, very, very different numbers. So, whoop, and then I slipped off the porch. So now if we look at the KH, or the carbonate alkalinity of this pond. And that's something that a lot of owners don't really test for. Um, it isn't included in the freshwater master test kits that are available on the main market, but it is available as a separate test kit. And we will have links below if you're looking to add that to your pond. So again, this is one of our lovely little Hawk parameter test kits. We test this on a regular basis. So usually, in order to keep your pH stable, your KH has to be at least 50. Now, that's still kind of low, in my opinion. Um, in order to have better insurance, I highly recommend that you get your KH up over 100. And this test kit goes by DKH3. So we're looking at this for this to turn pink. Five, six, eight, nine. 10. So already that is a carbonate alkalinity up over 171. So again, this is in DKH. So that's 17.1 milligrams per liter per drop. So yeah, I'm really good at my 17 times table now having done this for 10 years. So this is why, even though the rain is coming down at a pH between five and a half and six, this is staying stable at 8.2 because our KH is high enough. So if you're having heavy rains, you notice your pH going down, 
you have to buffer up your KH. Easiest way to do this is just basic baking soda. I mean, anybody has it in their house. Um, add a little bit. Again, we don't want to swing the pH too far, too fast. You're looking for about a 0.5 change over, say, four to six hours. And it's really going to depend on the biologic activity of your pond, because again, more fish. I mean, we only <laughs> we only have six little goldfish. They're only about this big. Um, we're fattening them up for some dietary studies. So bio load of this pond, really, really low. It's also really, really cold. So, oh, right now it's a little bit warmer. It's 58 degrees. Um, these guys are down at about 40 degrees before we got the rain. So I'll give you guys some lunch in a minute. I know, I think I'm coming to get them. Um, but really, again, the warmer it is, the more your fish will be respiring, producing carbon dioxide, and that will essentially acidify your water as well. So again, lots of rain coming down, low KH, low pH can severely affect the pH of your pond. So something you need to test for on a regular basis and make sure that you log it so you can notice trends over time. So thank you for, so much for joining us and we hope that your fish stay happy and healthy. For help with your fish, please visit the American Association of Fish Veterinarians at fishvets.org or the World Aquatic Veterinary Medical Association at wavma.org.